we head into winter and the temperatures plummet, do wind turbines freeze or do they keep spinning? Around the world, there are so many incredible windy places that are perfect for wind energy, but the challenge with some of these is that they're hit by really freezing temperatures during winter. So what impact does this actually have on the wind turbine itself? Wind turbine blades are intricately designed by engineers. So they have aerodynamic profiles, just like the feathers of a bird and it's lift that causes them to move and spin. But if this aerodynamic profile is actually impacted in any way, then this can have consequences for the wind turbine itself and the amount of power output. So in places where it's cold, like in Canada, you can actually get ice formation on the blades and this can impact the aerodynamic profile because it changes the shape, the overall shape of the blade. And this can cause the wind turbine to slow down and to stop spinning sometimes as well. And the ice itself, because it's heavy, it can change the loading on the blades and this can mean that the turbine becomes out of balance or the blades become out of balance. And in situations like this, where the blades become out of balance or the turbine slows down, then the internal control system will actually monitor this and pick it up and it will actually detect that there is ice on the blade itself. And this means that the um, wind turbine might actually shut down for safety reasons. If ice forms on the blades themselves and the turbine keeps spinning, then we're still not out of a danger zone because there's something called ice shedding. Now, ice shedding is pretty simple. It basically means that ice falls off the blades or it can be hurled, chunks of ice can be hurled in different directions as the blades actually spin. And this can be quite damaging because the ice can hit other wind turbines. So it can damage the blades and it can damage the nacelle. And the nacelle is the box at the top which contains all of the critical equipment. And the nacelle isn't just in danger of having ice thrown at it, it's also in danger of freezing because all of this critical equipment needs to be kept at temperature, at a set temperature in order to work. So sometimes we actually need to shut down the wind turbine itself if the equipment is getting too cold. This obviously leads to a loss of power production and a loss of money for the operator. So a really, really important part of a wind farm is actually being able to operate it. So just like a car, you actually need to maintain it and operate it. And wind turbines are the same. Sometimes you actually need to go out there and you need to change some components or you need to clean the blades or something like that. But in order to do that, you actually need to get access to the site. Now, given that a lot of wind turbines and the, the wind farms themselves are located in really remote places, imagine if you've got blizzards and snow and ice, and sometimes this actually stops all the transport in the local area. So actually getting people to the site can be really difficult. And then if you do manage to get people to the site, you need to think about how you could actually rescue them if they get stuck. So maintaining and operating a wind farm during the winter is really tricky as well. Ice and freezing conditions can have a real impact on the general production and the power output of a wind farm. So this is why many operators now invest in de-icing mechanisms and anti-ice pre um, prevention systems. I can't, anti-ice prevention systems. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, so they invest in, in these ice prevention systems, which can increase and improve production throughout the winter. Some of these systems will include installing heating elements actually inside the blades. The challenge at the moment though is that a lot of older wind turbines don't have these systems pre-installed so we're having to actually retrofit a lot of the the blades themselves which can be really expensive because a lot of the time you actually need to um, disassemble the blade itself and then take it back on shore or back to a manufacturer's or something to be able to install the heating elements inside. So that's quite expensive. Operators might also put water resistant coatings on the outside of blades and this will help to prevent the actual formation of ice. Another fun method is actually using a drone that will shoot de-icer out in order to melt the ice that has formed on the blades. So just like you use de-icer on the windscreen of a car, you use de-icer on the blades themselves. 
Um, but obviously, the tricky thing with this is actually getting access to the site. So if the person with the drone can't get access, then you can't actually use that method. What it does mean though, is that you don't need people to actually climb to the top of the nacelle and clean the blades themselves because a lot of the time, that's what you actually have to do. There's people hanging off here on rope, cleaning the blades themselves, which is just crazy. You have to really love rock climbing or something for that. But sometimes not even these de-icing methods can actually help or change anything. So a lot of wind turbines might be out of operation during the winter, which isn't good. And as we're heading into a world where we're going to be using more renewable energy, these are some of the challenges that we're actually up against and that we need to design for. And as we're thinking about tidal and wave and all the different types of renewable energy that require the weather, these energy systems are going to be located in really extreme places on earth with extreme weather. So we need to consider hurricanes and tornadoes and all sorts of things. How are we going to design against the most powerful things on the planet, the weather? The engineering involved in this is going to be incredible. So over the winter, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then you can play Spot the Spinning Wind Turbine. Yay! <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're traveling around and you can see some wind turbines, are they spinning? Maybe it's because it's too cold. And if it's not cold, then it could be for other reasons like cleaning or just general maintenance. But let me know in the comments whether you spot any frozen wind turbines because I would really love to know because I geek out about this stuff. <laughs> um, but Merry Christmas, everybody, or happy holidays. I hope you have a really, really amazing break, rest, drink, eat, be merry, and I will see you in the new year when I'm going to be doing lots of videos about different types of energy. And I am super, genuinely super excited about this. I think it's going to be a great year and I would love it if you came along with me. I will see you in 2020. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. <laughs> see you then.